Change the volume using the bar in the top right corner. Click Continue when you hear the sound clearly. Change the volume using the bar in the top right corner. Click Continue when you hear the sound clearly. Right, Judy. This week it's your turn to bring us up to date on your dissertation. So? I've finished the basic research and planning, and the first draft, and hopefully I can start writing the final version now. Good. Um, not everyone knows your subject, so you'd better introduce it. Oh, um, I've chosen to study everyday life in the East End of London in the early 20th century. Lots of books have been published about the East End, covering everything from health to how roads and districts got their names, so you might think it's an obvious subject to pick, but in fact I was brought up there and I've always been interested in finding out how the area shaped my upbringing. What materials did you use in your research? As I said, a lot's been written about the area and I use some of it to get an idea of what to cover, but the bulk of my work is based on the elderly people from the area who I managed to contact and arrange to meet and then recorded as they talked to me. Uh -huh. And when they referred to any specific events, I looked them up in local newspapers from the time. Was it difficult to get enough source material? Not a bit. The problem started when I thought I had enough material and sat down to devise a workable filing system. It took ages, but I was really glad of it when I came to write in the draft. Otherwise, it would have been impossible. And we also hold regular events at the library. Do I have to book for any of the events? No, that's not necessary. When you come into the library, do make sure you pick up a copy of the guide to the library. Of course, anything you need to know, such as how the catalogue system works, you can ask any member of staff. But the guide does contain basic information about our services. It doesn't include things like the special events, because they always change, but inside you'll find a plan of the library showing where, for example, the reading room is. It also tells you about our cafe in the basement, though that's not open at the moment because of building work we're having done to install disabled lifts. Oh, and if you can't find what you want on the shelf, there's a section about how to reserve books that tells you what you need to do. Thanks. I'll remember to collect that when I... Good morning. Good morning everyone. Welcome to all our staff on this summer's kids camp. It's nice to see some familiar faces back from last year. Let's hope this year's camp is as much fun for the kids as last year. In our orientation program this morning, I will introduce you to all the people you need to know at the camp. They each have a different responsibility in the centre, so it's a good idea to make a note of who does what. Well, first of all, you all know me, Jill Andrews. I'm the coordinator here. The next person you need to know is Mary Brown. She's our accommodation officer, so she deals with all the housekeeping matters concerning both the children's dormitories and your own accommodation wing. Next, we have John Stevens, who is our catering manager, and he organises all the menus. If you have any special dietary requirements, speak to John and he'll do his best to accommodate you. We sometimes find that the children complain about not liking certain meals, so if there's a real problem, you should get John involved. Then we have Alison Jones. She plans all the excursions and does all the bookings for the tour buses, etc. Alison also accompanies the children on the excursions and is responsible for making sure that the same number of children return to the centre as leave it. <laughs> Tim Smith is in charge of physical education. He'll organise the big athletics carnival that we have at the end of the camp. But he'll also plan the individual training sessions for the kids. We have to remember that exercise is one of the key features of this camp. Last but not least is our wonderful Jenny James. 
She looks after any of the children who are homesick or have problems getting on with other kids here. So don't feel you have to deal with those problems yourself. A chat with Jenny usually does the trick. You'll notice that this year we don't have a resident first aid person. Instead, we have a qualified nurse on call at all times should anyone fall ill. Three four eight eight three one. Oh, hello. I'm calling about your advertisement in the local paper. Oh, well, there were two ads, actually. Was it the one for second-hand furniture? That's right, yes. Last Thursday? Oh, yes. Some of it's already gone, I'm afraid. But uh, what exactly were you interested in? Mainly the dining room furniture, especially the table. Has that gone yet? Not yet. Oh, good. Can you tell me a bit about it? Well, it's round. I'm not sure of the exact measurements, but it's medium-sized. It seats about six. And how old is it? Hmm, let's see, ten years. No, it must be twelve by now. And the advertisement said you were asking twenty-five pounds for that? That's right. And do you still have the dining chairs? Yes, it's a set of four chairs. There were two more, but over the years a couple have disappeared. What are they like? Quite nice. They've got upholstered seats. You know, they're covered in material to make them more comfortable to sit on. That's green, but you could change it, of course, if you wanted something different. What sort of condition are they in? I'd say reasonable. They've had a bit of wear, and we're asking £20 for those. Right. And the other thing I wanted to ask about was the desk. Can you tell me roughly how long the top is? so I know if it'll fit in my room. Let's see, it's 75 centimeters high, I know, and the length's uh, one meter 20, and it's 40 centimeters deep. It's got three drawers, the top one's got a lock, so you can keep your valuables there. And you were asking 50 pounds. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for giving me your time today. Firstly, I'd like to talk to you about a career in the fashion industry, then about the kind of people we're looking for at Pacific Clothing. And finally, I'd like to tell you what we offer you if you come to work for us. All kinds of people work in a wide range of jobs in the clothing industry, from drivers to office workers and artists. At the moment, we're looking to recruit new staff from several professions. It, right now, we're on the lookout for scientists, particularly to work with the dyes we use to colour fabrics. And to design the patterns and choose the colours which are going to appeal to consumers, we have a strong design team. We're not looking for any new designers at present, but vacancies may arise in future. However, at the moment, we are looking for engineers to work in the production department. Just like any company, we too need practically minded people to make sure that we're not spending more than we're earning. So we're currently recruiting accountants. They're not usually associated with fashion, but let me tell you, they perform a vital task. But that's not to say that if you have qualifications in another field, such as management or sales, we won't be needing someone like you in the future. All right. Those of you who want to go on the ride, please just wait a moment while I give some directions to the rest of the group. You'll notice that the Welcome Center, where we are, is located on the southwest corner of Elm and Main Streets. For those of you interested in doing a little shopping, on the other side of Main Street, you can see a wonderful quilt shop. These are handmade blankets, which are usually made from patches of leftover material. They make wonderful gifts, but let me warn you, it will be hard to leave that shop, so you may want to save that for last. The next street up Main is Ash Street. On the south side of Ash is a handicrafts museum worth a look. You'll be amazed at the variety of handmade crafts there. On Main Street, in the middle of the block past Ash but before Oak Street, is a traditional one-room schoolhouse. Please be as quiet as possible and do not take photographs as school is in session. 